fighting believe that they are descendants of Cain and that they're coming to a moment in time when this conflict, the original conflict going all the way back to the garden, good and evil, uh, Satan, Lucifer, the devil, the serpent versus the creator uh, is all to come to a head again. And this cloning issue, this duplication issue, this replication issue is coming back onto the front burner, front and center again. Because why, Linda? Because what are they really trying to do? What's this huge project that has been going on for centuries in plain sight and most people never caught it? It's the order of the garter. Now the garter has a certain sexual connotation, you know, the women wear it on their leg and it's uh, 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 got a sexual connotation to it. And so the order of the garter, uh, the queen currently sits at the head of the table of the order of the garter, uh, Queen Elizabeth. And down through the centuries, um, um, knights were brought to the round table. And these knights of the round table, order of the garter, were then part of um, working out the will of the queen in the land, etc. It's a very secretive organization. Well, what is it really? It's a breeding program. They decide which royals need to be married off to which royals in order to maintain the royal bloodline and who's going to maintain uh, in what order uh, their uh, status, position, heights within the bloodline. These are the wizards, the high priests, of these Canaanite families. And again, how does somebody get to be king or queen? It's based on the blood, the purity of the blood. It's not based on whether they're geniuses or they're um, you know, really good at politics or they're people persons or anything. It's about the blood. So you're watching a bloodline right, right of king, to mate, to uh, control the bloodlines, who gets to be in power and why in the purest of the blood gets to be there. But this has come down now in our generation to this critical moment because uh, in the Crowleyan uh, scheme of things, uh, Crowley wrote the book about the little child. We had Parsons and his people uh, talking about uh, breeding a moon child. And this moon child would have spiritual capabilities, would have great um, um, access spiritual powers uh, like Solomon of old and so uh, they wanted to create this moon child this perfect child that really was uh, a child of the devil himself you know of course we go to the uh, uh, movie um, uh, Rosemary's Baby and again that's kind of ritualizing this moon child scenario uh, there's a ritual a rite a um, satanic um operation in order to create this child but in the current situation uh who is the moon child uh you've seen them see them on the news all the time born under a lunar eclipse at a precise date and it wasn't through artificial insemination and what was the most important feature in the conceiving of this child in ordering the bloodlines you have the mating of the Merovingian bloodline and the Windsor bloodline uh, with Princess Diana and uh, Prince Charles. You have in those two people all 13 royal families represented in the bloodline. And if you go back to the order of the Carter, to the Knights of the Round Table, to their broader operations, the sun never setting on the British Empire, or the Spanish, or the French, or these other countries as they went out through the world, what were they really doing? They were breeding with locals from people all over the world and working that breeding into these various players by marriage and intermarriage so that you have a child that is as close to the perfect bloodline of Cain as you can have on this planet 
with all the shared DNA of everyone. And so the pain is, is that they have blood from this and blood from that and all this shared DNA to access that shared consciousness. And also, uh, even in the names. So for example, Prince William, uh, one of his four names is Arthur. So why is that relevant? Uh, Knight of the Round Table, King Arthur, and what was the name of King Arthur? The once and future king. That's the whole Arthurian myth. And on the numbers, he is representative of all the families, even going out into these other religious uh, groups. Uh, so they constantly note how they're part of this family, that family, and this heritage, and um, preparing him not to be king of England, but to be the prince of Jerusalem. 